Hi, welcome to Bear Mountain. Today we wanted to talk a bit about Scabosia. There's annual Scabosia, and then there's the new types that were coming out a year or two ago called Scoops. We tried the Scoop Scabosia because it looked like it had a lot of interesting variations in color and the fact that the plant would be a perennial plant. So we planted it back in 2017, and you can look for a video on it. We, we did one called What's the Scoop on Scabosia, or the Scoop Scabosia. Anyway, we'll have a link to it. There's a card, a little eye up in the corner. And what uh, we did is we overwintered it. It came through the winter okay, but what happened in late spring is uh, it developed a serious case of root rot, and we lost basically the whole crop. So it was kind of strange. It survived the winter, came up, began to grow, and then by mid-May it, it had already failed. So unfortunately we had to abandon that crop. We have, though, been experimenting with trying to figure out how to get annual scabosia in our climate. We're in a zone 8-ish, 8A, 8B, and uh, we were able to, this last winter, get this QIS Salmon Pink as a test to uh, make it through the winter. Even made it through our really cold February with just a frost blanket. Not a lot of extra uh, things. We got a little dieback on the tip and some of the older center growth which we can prune out. Uh, but the plants themselves are they're waking up and they're looking vigorous. So we just kind of wanted to give you a quick update and saying you know if you're in a mild enough winter climate these were planted in the ground in June and uh, we got some crop off them last year, but this year the plants are going to be substantially bigger. Uh, we're taking out the center growth and leaving the side shoots, and they look like they're going to produce a lot. So, wanted to kind of give you an update on that. And then also, uh, we're going to put some pictures in the video here of what exactly we were pruning out. And once we finish with the prune out, then we'll put some compost down as a top dress. Maybe. Um, that should be about it, I think, at this point. There should be enough fertility in the soil, and we should get a good crop out of these, probably blooming by sometime in May. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Okay, so let's get these guys all pruned and get the box weeded. We got some bitter cress in here, and we want to get rid of that. And then we should, like I said, put some compost down and be good to go. Let's get it done. Okay, what we're doing when we're pruning is we're looking to go as deep as we can, we want to have the side shoots be this year's blossoms. So we're going back down into the center of the plant looking for the oldest, woodiest part and we'll snip that out. In some cases they're dead, in some cases there might be some small amounts of growth on it. But the whole point is what we want left is new stuff. We don't want to leave any old things in here. And this looks like this one's ready to go. It's got a little frost damage on the outside leaves, but those guys will eventually be sloughed off. So we just do that down the row to each individual one, again taking out old growth and leaving new stuff. You know, during the winter, quite a, quite a few days, there was no frost blanket on it, and they still came through. That's true in December, but our December and January were quite not warm. As, not as rough, but... Right. We did throw one on in February. Definitely if you get into temperature ranges where you're going to be in the 20s at night uh, on a consistent basis, you probably need to do something. What about the weeds? Okay, these are no-till beds, meaning we don't do any kind of rototilling or anything, and they're very small. Um, but it's kind of a microcosm of what we do on our larger beds. We just apply compost over the top of this every year and any rock dust or other minerals that we need to. Uh, typically, we'll put two applications on, one a light one in the fall, and then we'll put another one that maybe is a little heavier in the spring to take it through the summer. Uh, the fall application, in repeatedly adding compost, makes this top very friable, and the weeds are very easy to get out. This is a small bed, so just doing it by hand is just basically a lifting it out process. And the weeds, as the years have gone by, are getting fewer and fewer, so it isn't that big of a deal. Our back area here, which didn't have any plantings on it at all, probably has the worst of it, but that'll take a couple of minutes to clean up. Just to note is, is, is this is kind of a technique that, it's a no-dig technique that Charles Dowding has used for years. 
If you haven't know who Charles Dowding is, be sure to check out uh, his channel. We have a link to it in our subscribe channels that are really cool. It's off on the right side of our YouTube page. And he's got a really super gardening system and that's something I, I would encourage everybody to check out. But it's really easy to find the weeds and just very quickly dispatch with them. And we'll throw these guys in the compost pile. Do you think you'll have to weed again? Oh yeah, you know, here and there because the summer weeds, you know, if there's any weed seeds that are more summer, uh, warmer oriented, they'll pop up uh, coming, you know, in May or so and it may have to go through just real quick. But basically what's going to happen with these guys is, you know, once we get the dead stuff out and they start growing, they're going to fill in this area so tight that you're, you're not going to have enough light for having any weed problem. Isn't that why we plant so intensively? That is part of it. And the other part is, is we just don't like working that hard. <laughs> so, you know, more space, more working. Yeah. So this is a small test garden. Yeah, it right? is. It's... This was our test garden from last, uh, last summer. So uh, you can check out that link too. Um, it's just where we try different kinds of varieties and stuff to see how they will perform here and how our customers like them. Yeah, and the cool thing is um, that we uh, we weren't anticipating this to survive the winter, and it did just really well. So anyway, uh, if you like what you see here, please subscribe. Uh, leave a comment if you'd like to, and uh, have a good day. Bye. Bye.